My name is Will Fitzhugh, and uh, I'm the founder of the Concord Review. We publish history essays by secondary students from, so far, 45 states and 40 other countries. In 1987, I was teaching history at the high school in Concord, Massachusetts, and there was a lot of talk about low reading skills and, and poor writing ability and ignorance of history among secondary students. And I was on sabbatical, and it seemed to me that if I could start a journal for the best history essays by high school students that I could find, it might attract some good papers and also serve as an inspiration to other students who might not realize how hard their peers were working. We've now published uh, 1,000 and almost 1,300 papers by students from all over the world in 118 issues so far. We don't tell kids what to write about. So they, the range of topics is very impressive, really amazing, and um, we also don't tell them how long the paper has to be. So many of them have written to say they really appreciate the freedom to choose their own topic and to decide how much they want to read about it and how much they want to write about it. So it's really liberating, a number of them say, and for most of them it's the first serious project they ever did. Chris John Henrich was a, a student at Manchester High School in Massachusetts, and she read something about the um, sort of the brutality of medicine during the Civil War, the sort of a stereotype that mostly it's a pile of severed limbs and so on. She thought, I wonder if that's really fair. So she did a, a paper on Civil War medicine and found a number of improvements, uh, including uh, transportation of the wounded more rapidly and so on, many, many improvements in medical care of the wounded during the war. And then when she went to Stanford, she majored in biomechanical engineering. And uh, she's now in the health field, various jobs in the health field. So it was really interesting to hear her perspective. When students are published, uh, we ask them to let us know where they're going to college when they decide and so on. And many of them do not tell us, but, but some of the ones who do, um, the, the largest number we've kept track of is 141 have gone to Harvard and 119 to Yale. And uh, Stanford is now at 82, I think, and Princeton is number four. But a number of them have gone to MIT and Caltech and they've majored, some of them become doctors. They don't necessarily become history professors, um, but they carry their interest in history into their adult lives, I think, and that's very valuable. One of the earliest supporters we had was Albert Shanker, the president of the American Federation of Teachers. And I sent him a copy of the journal early on. And you can imagine how busy he was, but he took time to read it. And he decided to write a column in the New York Times talking about the Concord Review. And then he wrote another column in the New York Times writing about the Concord Review. And then he wrote a number of people he wrote uh, Lynn Cheney, who was the head of NEH at the time, and he wrote the MacArthur Foundation, suggesting that I get a genius grant and so on. Arthur Schlesinger uh, took an interest, uh, once said that there ought to be a copy of the Concord Review in every high school because it, it honored history and it, and it honored uh, serious writing and history by secondary students. I went to a boarding school in California, which I adored, and I had a wonderful time. I was president of the student body, editor of the yearbook, and whatever, and I thought it was wonderful. But when I arrived at Harvard, I had never read a history book and I'd never written a term paper. So I was unprepared. 
And I think part of my motivation to, in doing this is to have, see that more students are prepared for college term papers and college books. And so I've recommended that high school students should read at least one complete history book before they graduate. And they should, read, they should write at least one term paper before they graduate. And often people say, well, I can't have my seniors write a 12-page paper because they've never done one before. So I said, well, why don't you have the page per year plan, which would mean every year in school you write a page, a, you know, paper the same number of pages as the year the student is in school. So fifth graders would write a five-page paper, eighth graders would write an eight-page paper with maybe eight sources. And by the time they got to be a senior, they would have written an 11-page paper the year before. So they would be ready to write a 12-page paper. And we're talking about every student who reaches the 12th grade, not just the, the most the top students. Our goal is to put excellent work in history and in writing in front of as many of, their, of the students we can who, who don't know about it. Because our feeling is that if students see that their peers are doing really serious academic work, our hope is that it will first startle them and second inspire them to emulate that work. In order to do that, we have to get the Concord Review in front of as many secondary students, not only in the United States, but in other countries as we can. And we've only had the, enough money to do a very little bit of that. So any do donations uh, will go to that purpose of, of showing their peers the, the excellent work of their of, the, of other students. We do it in athletics all the time. We have, there are nationally televised high school basketball games, but there are no nationally televised history scholars at the high school level. So it's something that needs a lot more support than it's had so far. Mm -hmm.